Hi folks, Doyle Dykes here. Welcome to my Sunday string along. And I'll be stringing along today with this beautiful old Brazilian rosewood. I mean, check this out, guys. This is a beautiful guitar out of the 60s. And this was made uh, by a friend of mine who designed these guitars on the company. His name was Billy Grammer, a Grammer guitar. Isn't that cool? Special thanks to Kelly Barber and all of my friends over at Action Sound, Hawkins, Texas, for letting me use this today. I love Billy Grammer. He was my friend. And he loved the Lord, he loved his family, he loved fishing, he loved guitars, <laughs> and he loved this song. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Tell me of an unclouded day Oh, the land of cloudless days Oh, the land of an unclouded sky Oh, they tell me of a home Where no storm clouds rise Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day Like Billy, tell me of that land far away where the tree of life in eternal sheds its fragrance through the unclouded day. I like that. Oh, the land of cloudless days. Oh, the land of an unclouded sky. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm. Rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, they tell me that he smiles on his children there. And his smile drives their sorrows all the way. And they tell me that no tears ever come again. And that lovely land of unclouded clouded day Oh, the land of cloudless days Oh, the land of an unclouded sky Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day Oh, the land of cloudless days Far beyond the skies Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day <laughs> And I just did that little transpose there Just so I could do this, in fact Oh man, Billy Grammer, he was a sport. I loved uh, these guitars. I mean, they're really great. He loved the acoustic guitar. Of course, he played electric guitar as well. And uh, there's a little private joke on that string band, I'll tell you in a, in a moment. But uh, here's a, here's an album that he did. Uh, the un, In fact, The Unclouded Day is on here. And this is one of his uh, gospel albums. And, uh, and then he also did a Christmas album. And I'm on this. I'm on the, I don't know that I was on the other one. They didn't put my name on there for some reason. And uh, in fact, he got pretty mad. <laughs> he got aggravated because they didn't put my name on this one because it's called Guitar Chimes uh, with Billy Grammer and uh, Christmas Guitars. Uh, guitar Chimes of Billy Grammer. And uh, I was on this and played my Uncle Doyle's old guitar. And I have it right here. And I, I showed it the other day. And uh, Billy was very, very familiar with this guitar. In fact, uh, he and my Uncle Doyle that I got this from, pre-war Martin D45, uh, they were playing in my uncle's nightclub. 
and <laughs> they were just taking a break and they said we walked outside and I, my uncle was smoking a cigar or a pipe or something like that anyway somebody said they yelled fire fire and before he could get to my uncle he ran inside that building and rescued this old Martin guitar. And that's one reason this guitar just means so much to me. He said, Doyle, that guitar has so many stories. And I was a part of a lot of that, a lot of those stories. But he loved that guitar. And I'm sure he had that in mind when he when he built this one here. In fact, it's a great, great guitar. Did you notice my capo drop? Special thanks to, uh, of course, to Shub Capos. And uh, there you'll get a... Now I can't find it. Oh, here it is. <laughs> and uh, I'm surprised I don't lose more. But I, I uh, we're actually coming out with a with a capo. They made a few of them for me that has a little ring here where I can tie it onto the guitar. But uh, isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, Billy used to uh, let's see play. Let's see. guys really well and uh and he was he, he was actually born and raised in southern illinois and uh and then he moved to washington dc and of course before that i think he was in the in the army during world war ii and then moved to washington and worked in the making uh guns uh in uh at a shipyard for the navy ships and his wife ruth who was his high school sweetheart uh, she also worked in some kind of field like that. Then when the war was over, they lost their jobs, of course, and moved back to Illinois. And then they got a call because he, he grew up in a musical family. And his father was a great fiddle player. And, uh, and uh, he had such a facility on uh, uh, lead uh, guitar playing. And he played... Uh, uh, in fact, this uh, one of these guitars here, I think my buddy uh, Gene Jones that I grew up with, Gene had a, uh, a Gibson ES-335, and Billy turned this into a 345, it looks like, and had shot Jackson put another neck on it, and they, put a, uh, they painted it green and put a, uh, a, a Grammar guitar headstock on there. So he was always changing guitars around and designing guitars, and before he passed away, he was... Uh, Actually, uh, he hooked up with the Heritage guitars and used to tell me what a wonderful guitar they were. And uh, he knew a lot about guitars uh, for, for you guitar guys out there. In fact, I, I remember talking to him one time uh, about a short scale. And he said, well, Dole, that'd be great for you. You know, when you get older, uh, I think that would, that would be good uh, to play short. So, so he made his uh, flat tops short scale. I think that some of them were like 24 and a half. Or 24 and three quarters in that area. I think a lot of them were 24 and a half, kind of like a Gretsch. 
And, uh, and he said, yeah, that'll, that'll help you. Know, and he said, I was talking to Leona, uh, Chet's wife one time, and we were somewhere and Chet was there. And he was, she said he was always monkeying around with his guitars, just trying to keep them playing well and playing easier so he could play. And I said, well, I want to play, I want to be able to play when I'm older. And so I went, I was on my way to California and I shared that story with Bob Taylor. And I said, so can you build me a short scale guitar? And he put his arm around me. We're walking on the beach. He said, that's the best story I've ever heard about a, a, to build somebody a short scale guitar. I said, Doyle, you bet. And he said, we'll send you a couple of Frankensteins. And they sent me a 25 uh, inch and a 24 and three quarter. And I, and I like both of them, but I use them for a while. I said, split it down the middle, 24 and seven eighths. And there you go. And so that became the, uh, the scale of uh, not only these guitars and the Doyle Dykes uh, model here, but also all of the T5s and all of the other grand concerts from there on out. As far as I know, they still are 24 and 7 eighths, but it started with a, uh, with a conversation with Billy Graham. Isn't that something? He got a call from a guy named Connie B. Gay, who was one of the leading promoters and DJs and, uh, and producers in, on the East Coast. And he produced the Jim Dean show that was on national television. You can see that, those on RFD. And uh, in fact, I had, oh, here it is. I brought some photos, uh, early photos. And here's Billy uh, playing when he played guitar for Jimmy Dean. So they called him back and then he, uh, he played guitar on the Jimmy Dean show. And then uh, he wanted him to record a song. I played around and played around this old town too long. Summer's almost gone and winter's coming on. Played around and played around this old town too long. And I feel like I've got to travel on. Papa Rice and Johnny, Johnny can't come home. Johnny can't come home, oh, Johnny can't come home. Papa writes to Johnny, Johnny can't come home, cause he's been on that chain game too long. Played around and played around this old town too long. Summer's almost gone, winter's coming on. I've played around and played around this old town too long. Travel on, travel on, travel on. Uh, but Billy didn't miss notes uh, like that. And uh, I, I met him uh, when, when I was a kid. We went to the Grand Ole Opry and bought, Mom and Dad bought this book for me. I still have it. And uh, his picture is right here. And uh, there you go. Billy Grammer. Isn't that nice? And what a handsome man, too. And uh, there he is playing his grammar guitar here. But uh, he was a, a great mentor. I remember one time he told me, he said, well, Doyle, he said, you got to make up your mind if you're just really going to serve the Lord and not, he said, not compromise anything. And, uh, and he told me, he said, he said, oh, I don't play nightclubs. He said, I just don't do that anymore. And he says, I, I made a de the decision, you know, to do that. I'll play the opera and I'll do other shows and fair dates or whatever. But, and he says, I'm just not going to do that. And, he, was, and uh, he, he had stubborn love and faith for the Lord. And I admired that very, very much. And uh, what a wonderful man. But what I was going to say, and I always like the little lick of the week. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick of the week here. Take your two fingers here, and uh, and I push up. Put my hand here on the headstock. It's just like. Two fingers, you get more. Now, some of you have seen me do that before. Well, uh, <laughs> I was playing this song that I'd written, and uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, it was in an alternate tuning. And I played on the Grand Ole Opry. I think you can go to YouTube and find it. Just 
but Noel Dykes. Oh yeah. next week said I heard you on the opera the other night son I said well well thank you Billy and uh, he said great job he said I like that little uh, uh. <laughs> I said well thanks he said that's a good little trick you do and I said well thank you and he said uh, and you do it well and I said well, well thank you sir he said but but you know he said it's it's a good little trick but it reminds me of this guy he said one time <laughs> He said he was a great big fella, and he played uh, uh, the accordion. And he said he would take that accordion, he'd stretch it across his, all the way across his belly, and he would go, uh, he'd shake the, you know, the bellows. Uh, and he said uh, you know, people loved it. But we knew we wasn't really doing all that much, but it was a good trick anyway. And that's kind of like what you have. You have a good little trick. Uh, but you do it well. <laughs> I said, well, well, thank you, sir. And he says, well, Doyle, what I'm trying to say is, why don't you use that on something, on a song that the people know at the Grand Ole Opry? And I thought, well, yeah, I didn't really ever think of that, you know, but uh, I said, well, I'll, I'll, th I'll think about that. And I went to my bedroom that week, and, uh, and I came. <laughs> And so I can choose combination on the ball bash and the ball. Well, that's the way I came up with it. <laughs> and uh, I don't th know that I would have ever done that had it not been for Billy Grammer. And I'd played that song on there many, many times. So he was a. He was a great influence on me. He really was. And uh, a wonderful guy. You know, and, uh, and sometimes when you have things uh, in your life, you know, that, uh, <laughs> what was that? I think I have a motorcycle in my, in my, uh, in my phone here. And so uh, when you have things in life that you suddenly have a change in your life, and sometimes we need a, a suddenly in our lives, you know, just like when Billy Grammer moved back. Uh, uh, from the East Coast. He moved back to Illinois. He wanted to be a musician. That was really what he had in his heart. And then he got a call from this great producer, you know, and he played on the Jimmy Dean show. And then he, he, had, uh, he had a hit song with later, I uh, later around and played around, Gotta Travel On. The next thing you know, he moved to Nashville and became a member of the Grand Ole Opry and uh, was a great session musician. And because of the contacts he had made during his time there uh, on the Grand Ole Opry, it helped him to be able to, uh, uh, you know, get his company started with the Grammar Guitar Company, you know. And, uh, but he worked many, many years before he had seen anything like that. Suddenly, you know, there, there, there's always a suddenly. Sometimes you just need a, a suddenly in your life. And, uh, and but there, the Bible's just full of suddenlies. Yeah, it really is. You know, if you l really look in uh, in Acts, and here's the top of my head shot again, folks. We're just going to be real <laughs> casual here. And uh, but if you look in the book of Acts, they were all in one accord in one place. They had 120 people there, and all of a sudden, suddenly, there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind and it filled the place where they were they began to speak with other tongues and other languages on the day of pentecost in acts 3 uh, verses 2 through 8 and peter and john and the cripple man and uh, suddenly you know the the spirit of god had touched him and he was immediately suddenly he was healed and he began to walk and shout and leap and and praise the lord and just like if, when Jesus was doing that. In fact, Jesus said, The things I do shall you do, and greater things than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. And this is, this, this is one of the greatest and first examples of that happening. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas in prison. And uh, they got thrown in prison because he, he uh, cast the devil out of this woman that was, you know, 
<clears throat> just getting on his nerves and she had the the gift of fortune telling and so on and she kept saying to hear the word of the lord these men and all this and he just finally just cast her out and then people got mad because she had made money for them being able to uh, tell the future and and so uh they got thrown in prison and they began, and they got beaten and everything. And they're there. They just said, well, you know, may as well just start praising the Lord. They began to sing and, and praise and worship God. All of a sudden, and then suddenly <laughs> the earth shook and there was an earthquake and, and the chains and it fell off of them. And, uh, and the bars of the prison were open. And uh, the jail man, you remember, he was going to kill himself. They said, no, don't do that. He said, this is, this is from the Lord. We're not going anywhere. And he got saved, gave his heart to Jesus. And that's an amazing thing. So suddenly, it, the, it, it actually means happening or coming unexpectedly. Unexpectedly. I'm sure, you know, when uh, Billy got the call from uh, Connie B. Gay, that it was the, the producer in, in Washington, D.C., and and if you talked, well, Roy is not here anymore, but Eddie Stubbs and I had conversations about that man. And he was the first guy to ever introduce the package show where you had big acts, you know, that would go and fill arenas. He was the first guy to ever do that in history that, that we know of. And, uh, and then he, and he contacted Billy. Suddenly, something happened in his life. There was a suddenly there. And uh, it, it also means a, a synonym is immediately or instantaneously, instantly, straightway, all of a sudden, at once, promptly, abruptly, swiftly. And uh, just like on uh, Paul's road to Damascus, suddenly a light shone from heaven and flashed all around him. You know, it seems like a long time sometimes for suddenly to get here. But when, he, when God does, he, he comes normally, suddenly. When you think he's not going to show up, things aren't going well in your life. Someone just told me, a cha I need a change. I've had several people say that to me recently. I just need a change in my life. Well, you wait. Suddenly he's coming. Suddenly we'll be here. And one of my very favorite scriptures, I, I, I actually uh, spoke on this on the string along recently, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, and after you have suffered a little while, after you have allowed it to be so, after you have continued to humble yourself before the Lord and all the other things it says to do in chapter 5, in a little while, your suddenly will come. He, you know, he will establish, strengthen, and settle you. He will make you what you ought to be suddenly. You know, I, I, I could give you so many examples of this. And Proverbs 16, that, Proverbs 16 is loaded with stuff. And uh, for one, it says in verse one, we can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. In verse nine, we can make our own plans, but the Lord determines our steps. And uh, in, in Proverbs 16, 33, we toss the coin and one translation actually says we roll the dice, but it is the Lord who controls its decision. It, it's uh, it, and some and it comes suddenly. God can just roll it the other way like magic. You know, of course, He's not magic. He's the Lord, it, 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 and He sends His Holy Spirit to do things like this. In Proverbs nineteen, in the message, this is verse twenty-one. We humans keep brainstorming options and plans. But God's purpose will prevail. God's purpose prevails. It, it will outshine uh, and, and overtake your plans if you will trust him. And see, because it says in Proverbs 16 and 3, roll your works upon the Lord. What are your works? Whatever you do. I mean, whether you're in real estate, whether you're a teacher, uh, you, you know, I, I, even a family member recently, Dad, I just need a change in my life. There suddenly came just this past week. Amen. There suddenly just came. And they've been working on that suddenly for a while. So it doesn't seem like it will. But when it comes, it will come suddenly. Roll your works. This, this is what I do. Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, or completely to him. And he will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. What? <laughs> you just think about what I just said. Roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to him. And he, 
he will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will, and so shall your plans be established and succeed. So number one, roll your, if the first thing he says, we make our plan. So number one, plan. The next thing is to commit, roll them on him. So plan, pledge, you can say. Number one, plan, then pledge, or give those to the Lord. And number three, you're gonna prosper. So plan, pledge, or commit, and prosper. And it's just, that's just the way it works. But you might have to do that for a while before you see that suddenly come in. Isaiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. God's plan should outweigh our plans. And sometimes it, that just happens. We think we have it all together, and then suddenly God changes those plans. I remember years ago, I was, uh, I, well, let's see, let's go way back. Let's go way back when I had first gotten married. And uh, I was a land surveyor and not a really great one. <laughs> and I remember this one particular day, I was out in, uh, in a little creek in Jacksonville area, Jacksonville, Florida, over around the Regency Square area, back there was just sand dunes. We used to take sand dunes when I was a kid. Dad had a little dune buggy and we'd ride out there and... I mean, they, you can hardly even walk, and every day they would change. You try to survey in something like that. You put a stake down, and the next day it's laying over this way, or it's completely gone. And uh, so anyway, we had to survey in this area, and it was only about a mile by a mile or something, maybe a couple of miles, that it was like this. But it was, they used to mine there and everything, so it was tough. And uh, so they wanted to do some buildings. They wanted to build a road there. I remember one day Marcus Fairbrother, one of my good friends who ended up being a wonderful uh, and world-class architect, but he was under me and I, was, I became the instrument man because I got there before he did. <laughs> and so he was a low man and he was gonna have to, you know, do the things nobody else wanted to do. And, uh, but this day he wasn't there and there I was. And I, oh man, because we had to get the chain or this measuring tape across this little creek and it, you couldn't throw it. We'd tie it onto the sight rod, or it's like a, a, a pole, you know. It they, they wasn't digital like it is. They just started coming out with things like that then. And this is way back. And so uh, this is in 1973, uh, I believe, 74, yeah, right around that time. And so I tied the, the chain on to uh, the measuring chain and tried to throw it across it, couldn't do it. All right, Dice, get out there. And so I had to weigh it out in this black creek. And I mean, it was awful. It was only, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 feet and that was it. But, and here I am in the middle of this creek and all of a sudden here comes a water moccasin. <laughs> and those are dangerous down south. I don't know if you know anything about water moccasins, but you'd want to meet up with one. And they're aggressive too, let me tell you, they can be mean. And if you get by, bit by one, well, you, you may not live to tell it, you know, and they're, they're very, very poisonous. And so this, and they swim. And this thing was heading towards me like this. And all of a sudden he got about three feet from me and then he went under the water. <laughs> and you think in Matthew chapter 14, where Jesus walked on the water and, and you know, and, and Peter, you remember, you think they're the only ones that ever did that? You think... <laughs> Well, there's a, here's another one. They, they said, no, we, you know, we didn't know there was but one that could ever walk or run. He said, well, I think you were running on top of that water when he got in. Get out of there. And uh, oh, my goodness. And so and I remember on that same job, I was marking these, you know, the chain is 100 feet. So they, we had all these uh, um, people from uh, public works out there, you know, and we were measuring. We are going ahead of them. They were uh, putting this road in. And, and then I would go down this road. And they were going to repave it. 100, 200, 300, got up to 2,200, 2,300, 2,300, 2,400. And so I made a mistake. And, uh, and my boss, oh my Lord, he wrote me out a new one. Let me tell you, he said, can't you count, son? I mean, he was still pretty nice about it, but it, he, uh, anyway, he gave it to me pretty good. And oh my Lord, and it's so hot out there. And uh, I mean, I've had, I even had child migraines, so I just really watched myself. And, uh, and so I just wasn't all that great at that. I needed a change. I remember coming home and Rita said, you know, maybe you ought to be playing your guitar again. I'm thinking, you think? <laughs> and uh, she said, I think that's what you ought to do. 
And I said, well, I don't know if it would put me away a lot, you know. And she says, but that's what you are. I married you, and that's who you are. And that's why we're still married uh, 50 years this year. And uh, and I, I remember calling. I thought, well, I prayed about it. And I, who did I call? Billy Grammer. I said, Billy, I said, I, I'm thinking about getting back into playing again. And uh, he said, what are you doing now? And I told him. He said, well, you played with some other groups. I said, yes, sir all through high school, and I did. he said, weren't you with somebody up here? I said, for a short while, and I went home and got married, and and he said, well, who'd you play for? I said, J.D. Sumner and the Stamps Quartet. He said, well, if you can play for J.D. Sumner and the Stamps, you can play with any country group. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, let me check around the Opry, son, and I'll give you a call, or, or somebody will call you, and uh, it was only just a few days later, and suddenly, see, and suddenly I had the idea. And suddenly, I got a call from Grandpa's daughter, Eloise. And she said, Grandpa's going to be down there in just a few days, and would you like to try out for him? Oh, my Lord. My suddenly came. And so I'm out there, and Grandpa, I mean, I'll never forget it. And uh, you let me tell you who I invited out? My boss, that very man that gave me the what for. And uh, Melvin McGregor. And I said, uh, sir, would you like to come to a country music show? And, and he said, oh, man, are you kidding? I said, yeah, I was invited to come. He said, Grandpa Jones, I love Grandpa Jones. I said, well, he's, he's offered me a job, and I'm going to be trying out. Well, son, I hope you make it, and I'll sure be there. And uh, I remember Grandpa was saying, he said, well, uh, I heard you pick like Merle. Earl Travis. I said, well, it's a pretty tall order, sir, <laughs> you know. And he said, can you harmonize? I said, grew up doing that. And he said, uh, do you know any of the gospel songs? I said, grew up singing those. And he said, well, get up here and get your guitar. And I got up there and played with them on their show. And uh, we got off the side of the stage and he looked at me. He said, well, son, you've got the job if you want it. And I looked over at Mel McGregor was standing right over here. And I looked at him and he looked at me and said, Yes, sir, son. He said, don't even worry about coming back. He said, you don't even have to come back to the yard. You got enough vacation build up. We'll send you your checks, and you ought to have several weeks coming to you. He said, go on and move to Nashville. My suddenly came, and suddenly there was a change, and Billy had something to do with that. Isn't it amazing? I just wanted to share that with you, and it happens in every everyone's lives. In Isaiah 48, verse 3, long ago I told you what was going to happen. Then suddenly I took action and all my predictions came true. And that's what he was saying to the children of Israel. Suddenly I took action and all my predictions came true. Maybe it's time for your suddenly. I want to play a song on, on another guitar. You know, I've been, I've been praying about and thinking about this it's it's amazing how god really does put things together and and uh would, was talking to these folks here about maybe even coming out with this guitar again and uh and and uh, and, and i think it's going to happen now praise the lord god just been so good to us he really has I appreciate all you folks for really supporting and helping us. Uh, sometimes, you know, this is a labor of love. It really is for me. And uh, just a few nights ago, the things you don't see, I was so tired when I was doing my string along. And, uh, and I thought, well, I was trying to time it out for an, an, some other people to use it. And, uh, and I thought, well, I think I finally got, I was so stressed by doing that. And I thought, well, I think I finally got it. It, it took me probably two hours and I, and, or more. And I went back and I'd already worked on it for a day or two before that. And I pushed stop and I went around and I put it in my computer. And all I saw was the, about six seconds for me walking around the camera. So instead of turning it off, I was turning it on. And so it, was, it didn't record any of it, and I had to redo it. So what you heard last week was done about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. And, <laughs> and so I, I thank the Lord for his strength and his, and his mercy. But through that, I, I got direction, you know. And uh, he's the one I have to please. Turn. 
coming. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining me and also for uh, supporting us. We have some new mugs coming out this week. We have the GHS products. We have shove capos. We have t-shirts. I have a new t-shirt back here. We have all these things that people have been and buying strings by the boxes. All that stuff has helped me to be able to continue to do this and I want to say thank you for that. But my main focus is not on that. My main focus is you. And so I, your, your suddenly is coming. Say that. My suddenly is coming. Say that. My suddenly is coming. Suddenly, you're going to have a turnaround. It's going to happen. And I believe that. Father God, thank you, Lord, for your grace and your peace to keep us and to sustain us and, and to protect us and to provide for us. Uh, but Lord, there's some people that are saying they need a change in their lives. Lord, sustain them until they see it. But when they 
when they see it, they're going to know it's you because it's going to come suddenly and they're going to see that turnaround. I pray that you'll do it even now, even this week. Don't let them give up on you, Lord, because we'll, we'll reap if we don't faint. And I just thank you, Lord, for, to, for encouragement today and peace and strength and courage in Jesus' name. For those, that, if you haven't received Christ, say, Lord, come into my heart. I receive you as Lord of my life. Make me what you want me to be. Establish me, ground me securely, and strengthen and settle me. And I receive it now in Jesus' name. God bless you, folks. And may the Lord establish your thoughts that they would become agreeable to his will, according to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Amplify. Go look it up. Thanks for joining me on my Sunday string along.